Good morning all, I hope you are well and welcome to this morning's video. So this morning I have three pairs on watch and those are Aussie Swiss, Euro Dollar and Euro Kiwi. But before I start, before I break down these pairs, I just wanted to touch on, uh, I just wanted to load up, where is it? Um, if I get my watch list up, I just wanted to load up a couple of pairs. I think it was Euro CAD. Was it Euro CAD? No, it wasn't Euro CAD, Euro Aussie. That's the one, right. So in yesterday's video, you may remember that I was looking for this. Okay, this is, I just wanted to touch on, okay, the forecast is gone for some reason, but I was looking for a break above, if you remember rightly. I was looking for a break above here, followed by a flag above here. Now, one of the reasons you might be thinking, well, why do you always wait for these flags? Okay, if we just move that to the side. One of the reasons we wait for that is because that's the confirmation. That's usually the banks and the bigger players stacking their orders for the next wave to the upside. Okay, so we had the area of value all the way to the right, uh, to the left rather. Okay, there's the area of value. People, we were. I was anticipating people being caught the wrong side of the market down here, price pushing up, and then potentially a, a trade into this high here. Okay, that was my target. If you want to know more about that, feel free to watch yesterday's video. Okay, so one of the reasons we wait wait for the correction after the break above here is because if we don't, then this happens, okay? And I said to you in yesterday's video that the reason I, I actually said the reason I was waiting for a break above followed by a flag uh, is so that I didn't get tagged in, tagged out, and then price did something like this, and this became a bear flag to push lower. But you can see that doesn't look too dissimilar to what's actually happening at the minute. So that's a prime example of why we wait for the correction above or below the area of value, depending on which way we're looking to trade, instead of just placing an order here and then getting tagged in and tagged out, because that is the banks and the bigger players usually stacking their orders for the next move to the to the upside in this instance. Of course, that didn't happen, okay? So we now, because now, you know, now we I didn't take a loss, so no harm was done. So that's one of the reasons we wait for uh, what we do. The other thing I wanted to touch on was your, uh, Kiwi Yen. Okay, so if we just look at this, I said to you that because we were sat at an all-time high on Kiwi Yen, this is like a major train station, and at major train stations, lots of people tend to get on or off of the train, okay? So price, this is where people get impatient because they know they've been looking at this all-time high for ages and ages, and then when it finally gets there, people get impatient, they get itchy fingers, and then they start getting short too early okay and you see a prime example of that here okay so once again one of the reasons we wait for this we wait for you know why i was waiting for the the break above the push back down the flag is because thing at all time highs things like this can happen wick down you get wicked in too early so again even if we filtered this on the 15 minute chart there was no correction there was no sideways correction with you know there was no two touch correction with a three touch structural approach or three touch continuation all we got was a sharp pullback that in itself already tells me that 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 might be caused by orders being placed back up here which will likely drag price back up we then wick below here push back up and then price starts messing around and i said to you in yesterday's video that at these all-time highs price can do things like this we break above then come back in and it can do that for quite a long time so feel free to watch yesterday's video if you want to hear me saying that okay where I was talking about that. So now I'm just going to let price do its thing because it's starting to get a bit messy. Just going to let uh, price do what it wants to do. Wait for people, wait for the bloodbath to, um, you know, to play out. And then once the market settles, then we look to enter. Okay. That's what the amateurs are not doing. Okay. They're not waiting for these corrections. They're just jumping in a lot of them. Okay. And we're seeing no, it's just moving down correctively now. So we have an impulse correction. So potentially we push back up to here again get something more like that. But I'm not going to try and guess what price is doing at the minute because this is this price action is bunched, okay? It's not it's not really a structure, it's just consolidation at the minute collecting those orders at that major train station and then we'll let price uh, do what it wants to do. So the pairs that I have on watch today are Aussie Swiss Euro dollar and Euro Kiwi which look a bit more clean at this moment in time. So Aussie Kiwi on the higher time frames. As I said to you previously, we have this we have this move down here. Okay, we have this sharp move up followed by a sharp move down. This is more an, more of an inflection point. 
okay, m- rather than an area of value, okay, because it's kind of part of all of this move down. So, but the the key, the clue that it may may still be valuable is the fact that we had a near miss to it here, okay. So when we near miss to an area, that gives me an indication, particularly when the, the there's, it's a sharp move, it gives me a clue that this is a valuable area. Okay, we have another near miss there. We get close, we start to sell off, people get trapped into early. Then we break above, catch people the wrong side of the market. And then we start to push down with an aggression. And now I'm seeing this is an impulse correction continuation to push lower. Okay, I've kind of got a ray line here, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually the low because when we have a wick like that often it's just indicative of volatility and not necessarily indicative of the sentiment of the mark of the market the other clue is the fact that we have a, a near miss here to this high okay so potentially we may let's try that again potentially we may tap into that high push down get something like that and then this becomes a one two three into this low where this effect, effectively becomes the the middle section, okay? That then becomes a parallel structure. We then push up to there to take out that high, which this high near miss too, which gives us that. And then potentially we push down from there, okay? So um, that's, that's the theory at this minute. But regardless, okay, regardless, we have a high, which is clearly visible on the daily daily chart. It's sharp, okay? We sold off sharply, suggesting there's a lot of liquidity there. And now you can see that potential impulse correction continuation to take us up to that area. So because of what I just illustrated a minute ago, I'm only kind of looking for a short term play down to here, not necessarily all the way down to here or down to this low, because we could easily turn into that. What I just showed you, something like that. Uh, so I'd be quite happy to just, just take a short term play. So so we broke above there, caught people the wrong side of the market. We've pushed down. We've got the sideways correction. We have a sharp move, which we could be looking for trades from that area. OK, as I said yesterday, we have kind of have this as well. If we were to measure that, we assume that the leg out is of a similar length. So impulse correction continuation that would take us up to here. So when a move potentially finishes at an area of value, which is kind of retesting the back end of all of that. Okay. All of that makes contextual sense. So what I'll be looking for from this pair today is the following. Are we looking for a tap into this area? Because there's no structure leading up to this, I'm looking for a tap into the area, followed by a one hour impulse down. If we get a three touch five minute continuation or a two touch five minute continuation with a three touch structural approach, then I would look for a reduced risk entry on the break. As I've illustrated, if we get the same thing and it's a 15 minute flag, um, then I would look for uh, the same thing, but I would have an entry on the break. But I would also be waiting for price to come up to tap the initial high. And if that happened, then I would look for an entry within the structure and cancel the original order. And then my target in this instance would be where I've just illustrated down that, to that low, I would m measure from the range that the tight flag that I was uh, looking to get short within or on the break of was within. And then I would set a take profit at 90% where price often pulls back deeply. Okay. Or even if it's going to continue in the forecast direction, that would give us something in the region of 5.8. Okay. So just because of the, you know, just because of the higher time frame price action, I'm not looking for that um, necessarily that higher, that longer term move on this one. So that is Aussie Swiss. Okay, the alert is set below the area of value. If it doesn't trigger, I don't need to check this pair at all. And that's how you avoid being tagged into trades too early if you're, you know, an impatient person. Uh, as I've illustrated on Kiwi Yen and EuroCAD. So Euro Dollar next up on my list. Uh, really, this could be higher up. I've just put it slightly lower down because of the sequence. Okay, partly because partly because this is higher up in the run. If you just look where the entry would be positioned in terms of this, uh, in terms of the range. So from here to potentially all the way down there, we're kind of higher up in the range. Whereas with Euro Dollar, you can see within this whole range, we're kind of lower down. The other, the other reason it's lower on the list is because this move here has been a bit more direct than Euro Dollar, where you've had this really sharp pullback, okay, which kind of reacted from nothing. Uh, so that's why this is 
lower down on the list but you can still see we have the sharp move up here followed by the sharp move down we tap into it okay let's just analyze this on the daily let's do it properly okay we can tap into it but we don't really break break above okay and you know we can see this high even on the weekly chart to some extent so we would normally see more of a, a break above if we're going to move to the downside as i've illustrated numerous times now and so it's no surprise to me that we then get this kind of uh we get a bit of an expanding pattern, okay? The expanding pattern leading up to that high, and then we break above this high by a more significant amount, then we push down. However, from here onwards, the sequence is a little bit strange, okay? So we get a push down followed by a very large correction, which is not typical if we're going to do this, okay? We then get a very, very sharp pullback that pulls back quite a lot of um, this move, more than we would normally see before the sell-off. So already the sell-off, is uh is not typical so um so that's why this is lower down on the list however you can see that we've ever, had a very very impulsive move down regardless regardless of what's happened before you can see we've had a very very impulsive move down and we're pulling back to what is a daily high okay so a higher time frame liquidity point not the most standout but it's there we can see it so uh, what i also like about this is that now that price seems to have settled a bit, that's the key thing. So we've had this kind of erratic or strange price action, but now price seems to have find, found its feet. And you can see that we're pulling back, we're pulling back to almost the 50% mark, which is nice. I can also see that there's there's no inflection points above this area of value that I need to worry about. The next one is all the way up there. So it's too far away for me to um, need to mitigate risk in any particular way you can also see that we're pulling back seem to be pulling back to the area so what i'm going to be looking for from this pair is once again the same thing again so now that price seems to have settled we have a base to this structure okay so we have a, a bit of a near mist there but we have a two lows okay i'll be looking for a tap into the area of value same thing again a one hour impulse down followed by a three touch five minute continuation or a two touch five minute continuation with a three touch structural approach. And then I would look for a reduced risk entry on the break. If we got the same thing and it was a 15 minute correction, then I would um, look for the same thing again, but I'd also be looking for that risk entry within the structure. And because of this uh, slightly strange sequence, because of this slightly strange sequence, once again, I would only be, I'd be targeting that low there for something in the region of, six percent because if we zoom out it's it's highly like it wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me particularly let's have a look at the dxy yeah it, it wouldn't surprise me so for example the dxy the dollar index which is the inverse of euro dollar okay so if this is just to move down to there to then push up okay to give us that to give us that impulse correction continuation then euro dollar will likely push may not push all the way down to there either okay something there uh so we may get something we may tap into that area whoops we may tap into that area push down and then perhaps do something like that which would give us that kind of structure, which then taps into maybe that high, for example. So I'm just happy. I'm just happy for a shorter term trade. If this was, if this sequence was more direct, okay, and uh, then I'd be more happy to be targeting these lows down here. But quite happy, you know, not not trying to be too greedy on this one. Just playing the range. That's all I'm doing. Playing the range. Okay, trading is not being about you know these home run returns it's just about managing your capital where can i where can i safely manage my capital to well if this was to form i could safely manage my capital you know we don't know everything that's going to happen you can still take losses but uh, based on what happens the majority of the time i could manage my capital easily down to there so what i would do is exactly that i would measure from the range to the range again i would set a little take profit down there at the 90% area for about 5.5 and then I would trail my stop loss accordingly so that is euro dollar okay last up euro kiwi which is the reason it's one of the reasons it's last is because if we just zoom out you can see that in terms of um this whole range 
we're quite far potentially. We never know. We might not be far into the run, but in terms of this low and this whole range, we're quite far into this move. Okay, so this is we're all we've already hit that area where there will likely be a lot of profit taking. Okay, but if we zoom in, okay, so one of the reasons this is um, one of the reasons this is lower on the list is because you can't actually see my area of value on the daily chart but you can see this high so that that's all good because if we were to break above that and then break back in then we've broken above and back below a higher time frame liquidity point and then we could be pushing down to take out these two lows which near missed there okay that makes sense when we get the near miss they often get taken out so if we break above here break back in and then get a correction it's likely that we're following it's likely that this is just a let's try that again it's likely that this is just an impulse correction continuation to take us up to the area, then push down to take out that. And then after that, you know, remains to be seen. But as we start to drill down, what you can see is we can see this sharp move here. So we have this sharp move up followed by the sharp move down. What did that sharp, this exchange of liquidity do? It caused price to smash through this brick wall low here okay so there must have been a lot of liquidity there and therefore that makes this an area of value what also makes it an area of value the fact that we near missed to it okay people were waiting patiently until they weren't and then when it got near to that area people started selling and then of course we got what did we get we got that middle section okay which looks like a gives this that impulse correction continuation feel to give us that kind of structure Okay, so this is I structurally I do like this. It's just lower down on the list because of where it's positioned um relative to the other pairs. Okay. That's one of the reasons anyway. So we've got a bit of a base now. Okay. We have first bottom, uh, second bottom. So what I'm looking for in this instance is I'm waiting for slightly more deliberacy with this pair just because of where it's positioned on the higher time frames. So I'm looking for a tap into the area of value, a push back down below the area of interest, and then we would be very well positioned uh, on for a move, as I said, uh, to the downside. Okay. The sequence is, the sequence is actually, let's have a look at the sequence. I would say the sequence on the way down is actually better than um, Euro dollar, but positioning is more important. Okay. So, the sequence is not as important as where price is positioned on the higher time frame. So that's important to remember. We use the PSE model. Okay. What do I have here? Positioning sequence entry. Okay. So I'm happy with the positioning. Um, it, it, I'm happy with the sequence. And, and now I'm just, I use that to determine my entry. So what I'll be looking for is a push, a break above the area of value, a push back down below the area of interest. And then in this instance, I'm not looking for a five minute continuation. I'm looking for more deliberacy because of where we're positioned on the higher time frames. So I'm only looking for a minimum of a three touch 15 minute continuation or a two touch 15 minute continuation with a three touch structural approach. And then I would look to get short on the break or within it. And then I would measure it from the range. So area of value there down to this low. And then I would set the take profit um, at that low. Okay, so, whoops. I would set the take profit there for something in the region of nine, nine and a half percent. And some of you newbies might be thinking, yeah, but that's a greater profit potential than the other two pairs. Again, you're, you're doing things in the wrong order if you're thinking that way. Okay, I used to think like that. It's not about the profit potential. It's about which pair gives me the, e the greatest ease which pair gives me the greatest opportunity to get in and take my risk off the table? Okay. So it's about risk management first, profit potential second. If you do things in that order, you're more likely to be profitable than these people who are just FOMOing into trades because they think and trying to get the tightest stop loss because they think that that's going to, you know, make them an overnight millionaire. That's not how it works. If it was that simple, do you not think the banks who are doing what we're doing? would be uh, implementing the same strategies. Of course, the reason they're not is not because you can't hit home run trades. It's because that way of trading is not the safest way to trade. And when they're trading your capital and mine, then they need to be trading safely. Otherwise, we start banging on their front door wondering where all our money has gone. But that's another story for another day. I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. I will see you again in the next one. And if I place a trade, I will update you in that video with a trade recap. Enjoy the rest of your day.